Today we've got a rank math setup video. So we're gonna go through a complete rank math setup and rank math SEO plugin tutorial. Now, rank math is a lot quicker to set up these days in the latest version. You'll notice other YouTube videos are much longer. I think the latest version of rank math has really streamlined that setup process, so it's much, much easier. And then after we've set up rank math, I'll go through a complete example on how to generate SEO optimized content for your WordPress website using rank math. So all of this in this video, if that sounds interesting, then keep watching. From our WordPress dashboard, we are under plugins and add new. So we're gonna search for Rank Math. Rank Math will pop up, probably the first one here, Rank Math. Go ahead and install and then activate that one. There we go. And that will trigger the setup wizard. So this is pretty easy to follow. Uh, let's go ahead and connect a Rank Math account here. You have to click the terms of service. I'm gonna go with Google for this demo, but up to you which one you wanna do. And just sign in with my Google account. So we get a notice here that it sent the login details to our email address. You'll get an email with your login details there. Just follow the login link there. That will take us to our Rank Math account. This is a free Rank Math account that I'm logged into now. Now that we're logged in in our browser, we can actually complete our setup in our WordPress dashboard. So back to our WordPress dashboard. Let's go back to Rank Math here and we can actually connect our account now. So here we just click OK. And the first time we run this, it's best to run it through the easy mode wizard. You can always change it to advance if you need to change things later, but this will do everything by uh, default industry best practices. So uh, this is much quicker as well. So let's go with the easy mode and start the wizard. This next step will detect if you've got any other SEO plugins on your site at the moment and it will import the data from them. So usually people are using Yoast and changing over to Rank Math. It'll pick up your Yoast data and input that into Rank Math, which is really convenient. So we just click start import, wait for that to import. And when that's all done, we press continue. This step will automatically deactivate Yoast as well after it's done. All right, now we fill in our information about our website. So in this case, the pet care website probably fits as a, a small business site. Uh, if you were doing something else, such as doing a WooCommerce web store, you might choose web shop. If you're doing affiliate marketing or content marketing, you could probably go for personal blog. So those would be the most common choice. I'm gonna go with small business site here and let's fill in this as well. Now for our business type, find something that suits you. And if you don't find something that fits you exactly, just choose organizational or local business. So I'm gonna go with local business for this one. Then we pop in a company name. I'm calling this one Ideal Pets for this demonstration. And our logo for Google, it's pulled the logo out of our theme automatically here. It does say it prefers a square image. So if you've got a square version of your logo, definitely use the square version. So they actually have a square version in here. So I'll use that one. If you don't have a square version of your logo, just make one up over on canva.com or something similar. Um, the default social share image. Now this is one that is important. If one of your posts or pages doesn't have a featured image, it's gonna use the default one here. So it recommends 1200 by 630 pixels. Now, I've already made one up here, 1200 by 630 pixels. I would recommend just picking a picture, don't have any text or logos or graphics on there, just a nice picture of a happy customer or the happy user of your product. So this looks all good, just save and continue. Next step is to link our site to Google Search Console. So this actually makes it super automated and super easy. It just has one button. It's gonna connect us up with our Rank Math account. So it's gonna connect Google to our Rank Math SEO. So go ahead, log into your Google account and just give it permission to access um, analytics and search console. Go ahead and click continue. Now Rank Math will connect to that Google account and any Google search consoles and analytics that you've got on that Google account are gonna appear set up here. So just select them from the drop down here. In my case, I've got ideaspot.site and ideaspot, the property is ideaspot and I wanna view all the website data. And then we go down and we can turn email reports on or off, doesn't really matter. And then we save and continue. So now we're all done and let's return to the dashboard. This will land us back on our local SEO section of the titles and meta on our rank math. So this is really the last few details that we need to fill out before we, our setup is basically done here. So we'll see that most of this is already completed. Let's scroll down, we have to add an email address in here. And then we pop in our address. We want this address to be the same as the address that we use on Google. It'll mention up here that you should claim your business on Google if you have not already. So. Uh, We'll pop that address in. Let's imagine that our Google My Business was something like this, where we got our address there. Copy that out. Make sure this is exactly the same as what it's showing in your um, Google My Business account. 
So that's your street address, your locality, your region, your postcode or zip code and your country. If you don't have your business listed in Google My Business already, just head over to uh, Google My Business and sign in and set that up. This stuff we can leave as is. The opening hours, again, just set that up according to what your business is and make sure that your opening hours match the opening hours in your Google My Business listing as well. So, uh, so let's say we're not open on Sunday, so I might remove that and just change the hours to match uh, what you obviously use for yourself. Now we pop in a phone number, just pay attention to the format there. We've got the country code in front with a plus sign and then we've got our mobile number with no leading zero. So if our phone number looked like that um, in Australia, we would pop in, um, we drop that zero and put our country code 61 and then dash three numbers and then three numbers. So that would be for Australia. If it was the United States, uh, you'd have one and then you'd usually have an extra digit for United States mobile number. Something like that matches matches the format there. Now, the price range is for your goods and services. If you're doing a budget service, it's one. And if you're doing a luxury service, it's four. So most people probably want to go with uh, two or three. I'm going to go with two for this one. Now we designate our about page and contact page. So it's best practice to have an about and a contact page on every website. On this case, it's got a who we are, which would be our about page and get in touch would be our contact page. I like to just call them um, about and contact just to stay conventional, but uh, totally up to you. It doesn't really matter. In this case, the about page is the uh, the who uh, we are and the contact page is the get in touch page. So I'm going to choose those. You can type them in and it will appear here. Next, you can enter a Google Maps API key. You can follow the link there, grab your API key and put it in. The other way you can do is just embed a Google Map on your About page and your Contact page. I'll show you how to do that. If we were editing a page, just add a new block. Um, we want to add a HTML code. So there we go. And then we just need to grab the Google Map embed. So let's say we were on this location here. Um, we want to click Share on Google Maps and just embed the map link there. Copy that. You can choose different size maps, um, small, medium, large. I'm gonna go with the medium one here, paste that into the HTML and, and we're good. We can click preview there and it will show our, our Google map. The other thing you can do if you're using the Astra theme, it's always good to use the ultimate add-ons for Gutenberg blocks. It actually gives you a map um, block to use. So we can type in maps here and you'll get a Google map you can enter there. So either of those methods are pretty quick. I think a little bit quicker than actually uh, linking up your embed API. Finally, for your geo coordinates, let's just pop those in. That's easy to get from Google Maps as well. Just go to your location, right click and grab the coordinates there. That'll be right on top and uh, it'll copy it to the clipboard there. Let's head back and just paste those coordinates in. So we're pretty much good to go here. Everything can be left as default from here, basically. You might want to tweak some of these little things here, like the separator character for your title. You'll have a hyphen by default. Uh, you could make a um, the vertical pipe instead. Some people prefer that. I kind of prefer this one myself, but um, pretty much everything else is cool. If you're active on Facebook or Twitter for your um, business, you might want to add the... Um, URLs and Twitter usernames and things for your Facebook and Twitter, but that's optional. And the other settings are basically already on, uh, they're already set to industry best practice SEO. So we can leave all this as it is and we're going to be all good. I think what we can do now is we can go through and actually create some content and do some SEO on a blog post. So I'm going to head over to my posts. I've got a draft post here. Let's go and edit it. And what we'll see is now that we've got Rank Math installed, we actually get a SEO score for our post. So I've pasted in a draft post here about why we should get a beagle. I want to stay on theme with my, um, my pet care theme. It's talking about why we might want a beagle. This is only 14 out of 100 on its rank math score. Let's try and optimize this and get this uh, search engine optimized. First thing you'll notice is that you can switch between your post settings with the gear and we can go to the rank math settings with the uh, rank math icon here. So this will give us all the rank math suggestions that we need to improve the SEO of the post. All right, now the first thing we need is a focus keyword. So this is a search term that we want to optimize for. So I might optimize this for why get a beagle. I might actually change my title to that as well and see if that improves things. Why get a beagle and the focus keyword is this. Straight away, we're up to 52 out of 100. And that's just by matching our title to our focus keyword. So we're using a focus keyword in the title and focus keyword not found in your SEO meta description. So the meta description is based on the first paragraph here. So I might add the search 
uh, keyword to the first sentence in this title here. So I absolutely love bagels. So uh, why get a bagel? So now we've got our keyword in the meta description and it's not found in the URL. So let's go back to our post settings and let's find our post and see our permalink URL. So why get a beagle? That looks okay. Let's try resaving it and see if it's picked it up. So I'll save it here. Let's head back. And yeah, that looks okay now. It is used in the URL. I think it's just because we changed our title and it hadn't picked it up yet until we saved the draft. So it looks okay now. And if you're not sure what any of these means, they have a question mark there where you can click it and it'll bring up a tooltip that you can follow. Um, the next one, content is 1,277 words long. That's good. Basically, you want to be more than 600. And if you want the perfect score here, you want to go over 2,500. So a very long comprehensive article is optimal. But yeah, usually 1,200 is fine for a lot of different keywords. So I'm just going to leave that as it is. Now, additional, we've got six errors. We don't have any subheadings with the focus keyword in here. So we could just add that to a subheading. There we go. And it is found in the subheading now. So that's all good. Add an image with the focus keyword as alt text. So we can go ahead and do that pretty easily. Just add an image and let's find an image. There we go. And let's look in our media library. I'm pretty sure we have a beagle in here already. There's one right there. Let's select that one. And we want to make the alt text why get a beagle. If we put that in there, now we've got a tick for our image alt attributes. So we're up to 71 now. We're getting towards where we need to be. The keyword density is only 0.16, which is low. The focus keyword needs to appear more than two times. So we've only got this used twice in our whole article. So let's go ahead and add uh, why get a big into our paragraphs. You want to do this in a way that sounds natural and doesn't mess up the readability of the article, but we want to use it multiple times to increase that keyword density. For example, right here, we could add it in rather than saying, yes, that's right. We could put why get a beagle. Just pop that in there, replace it. Why get a beagle? Beagle is love to cuddle. That sounds natural. And now we're on three. So let's go ahead and repeat that. I'm going to skip ahead and just do that throughout the post. So just skipping ahead, we've got our keyword density up to one. So that's 13 times in a 1,279 word article. So uh, whatever your word count is, just divide that by 100. And that's how many times you want to use that keyword says link out to external resources and use a do follow link. So link out to an authoritative website. In this case, I might link to an article about Beagles. The Wikipedia articles on Beagles is a, probably a good thing. Wikipedia article is generally a good authoritative source you can link to on your blog post. So I'm just going to link that up. Just pick one there and I'm link that up. So I've linked that to Wikipedia article on Beagles that, that gives us ticks for those. We couldn't find any internal links. So what you would do here is look around your article and find something relevant that relates to another page on your on your site or post on your site. So if we're talking about maybe um, training the dog, we could link that to our services page. So this talks about training. Let's uh, let's link that to the services page. Uh, there we go. And that's an internal link that's relevant to this bit of text. So that is a internal link. And now finally, we've got uh, title readability. So it says your title doesn't contain a power word and your SEO title doesn't contain a number. So let's fix that up. Now, I know you're thinking, what is a power word? They've got a link there that'll take us to an article about power words. They've actually got a list of power words down here. There they are. They're all interesting little words. Um, absurd, adaptable, adorable, um, agony, you know, big, powerful words that improve the click rate. So maybe let's go with amazing for our power word in our title. Let's add that to our title. So, and we want to add a number as well. So usually people do something like uh, six amazing reasons. So we've got a power word and we've got a number in our title now. So that should make our title readability all good. And now we're up to 90 out of 100. So we're pretty much done. I might save that draft. The only other things that we could do to get that to 100 is make it longer. So make it over 2,500 words. And under content readability, we could add more images and videos. So if you add lots more images and videos to make it more engaging, you'll get that up to 100. But if you're happy around that green point, then I think you're pretty much good to go. We can publish this and we're all done. Now, the other thing worth mentioning here is this is obviously a blog post article. If we go ahead and click our schema options here, we've got article here. We can actually used other different types of schema. So instead of doing an article, we could write about a, um, a restaurant or we could have a recipe, we could write about a product and we can actually add details related to this kind of um, item. So if we're reviewing a product, for example, 
we would go down, we'd add the, the SKU, the brand name, the price, currency, um, stock availability, if it's on sale, um, put in ratings for the product. And these things show up on Google search results and they help um, boost the rank if someone is searching for a product and you've written a good article about the product. So um, that's another great way of adding a schema to your content. Now, it's worth noting that the pro version allows us to do multiple schemas. So that is really cool. You can actually write about this as if it was a, um, a product and an article. And maybe there might be additional services related to the article as well. So you can have lots of things in there and get traffic in multiple different ways from Google. So this is really cool if you want to get the pro version. But I think for the most part, article will do a good job of ranking your blog posts in terms of content marketing or affiliate marketing, which is um, a pretty common reason for doing blogging. In the case of blog posts and articles, you can pretty much leave it as default. You might want to change it to something more rele more relevant if it's an article or a blog post or a news article, but that's pretty much it. You can just leave this as default normally on blog post. doesn't really matter. I just noticed that should be reasons rather than reasons. So just fix that up and I think we're all good. So that's the basis of creating a SEO optimized piece of content. Now I was using the Gutenberg editor, but it's very similar if you're using Elementor or Divi, the same process is available in your, um, in your page builder. You can do the same, the same workflow as well. Now I should mention that everything we did today was using the free version. I was using free features for every single thing I did during this tutorial, but I should mention that the pro version has one particularly killer feature that will help you if you're running a business through your WordPress website, especially WooCommerce. So if you're using WooCommerce, the pro version has WooCommerce product schema and SEO variables. So this means that you can take your WooCommerce products, get them ranking under the Google Shopping tab. So if you can get ranking in these listings here, uh, the Rank Math Pro version is going to pay for itself pretty quick. If you've got a WooCommerce store that's getting traffic and you want to get some more um, eyeballs on your products through that WooCommerce um, Google Shopping tab there, get your products ranking in there. Go for that pro version. Um, if you're doing a freelance or business operation where you're doing multiple WordPress websites for clients, you want that one. If you're just doing a solopreneur project, go with that one. But um, got that link in the description. It would help the channel a lot if you use the link in my description, but you don't have to. Totally up to you. Um, but I just thought I would mention that because that's a pretty good feature if you want to get some more conversions on your WooCommerce website. Finally, the other thing you'll need to make a good website that ranks well is a fast website. So I'd recommend using some very fast VPS hosting for running WordPress. I'll put links to my favorite WordPress hosting methods up here. Um, probably Cloudways is a good one and Vulture VPS is another good one. If you're a little more technical, um, try these out. Um, free trials for both of those videos if you watch them, um, follow those and you can get some very excellent uh, WooCommerce and WordPress performance for quite a decent price. So check those out, but thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.